These fans are very excited as they have made the trip all the way from Georgia to Heritage Park in Taylor, Michigan for the Junior League World Series. The Junior League Baseball World Series today. The United States representative is from Cartersville, Georgia, just outside of Atlanta, taking on Panama. And you might ask, what is Junior League? Well, they're very familiar with it here in Taylor, Michigan, the 22nd year of the event here. 13 and 14 year old kids playing seven inning games and a big difference because they play on major league fields. I'm Joe Castellano along with Darnell Coles, former major leaguer. And Darnell, certainly that's a big adjustment to go to the bigger field, isn't it? Yes, it is. And today these guys are going from 60 feet bases to 90 bases. And, and if that's not bad enough, they're going from 46 feet to 60 feet, 6 inches on the mound. Adjustment, those are part of the game. Well, it doesn't really affect the Georgia power hitters because they have two of them that can hit it out of any ballpark, really. When you look at Tyler Gilreath, who also is the starting pitcher, and Barrett Knapps. Tyler and Barrett are hitting 529 and 526 respectively. These guys are swinging the bat as good as young men can swing it at this age, and they're doing a great job for their ball club. Well, it's a very different team when you look at Panama because they count on defense, and uh, the star of the team is Jesus Barroso, who's a slick fielding shortstop. Yes, he is, and the likes of Omar Vizquel. He does everything for this team. He's the catalyst. He gets on base. He steals bases. He does everything they need, and they're going to need him to come up big today for them to have a chance. Coming up, it's the Junior League World Series as Georgia takes on Panama, and the pitchers are ready to go in Taylor, Michigan. From Heritage Park in Taylor, Michigan, it's the championship game of the Junior League World Series. And you can see where Cartersville, Georgia, comes from the southeast region near Atlanta, Georgia. Here is their starting lineup. Hi, I'm Danny Gilreath, the manager for Cartersville, Georgia. Hi, I'm Scott Nix, coach for Cartersville, Georgia. Hi, James Farr, coach from Cartersville, Georgia. Scotty Morris, shortstop, favorite players, Rafi Alfred Call. Hi, I'm Kevin Meredith, I'll be playing second base, and my favorite player is Eric Gagne. Hi, I'm Seth Marlin, and I'll be playing third base, my favorite player is Kirk Schilling. I'm Tyler Gilreath, I'm pitching today, my favorite baseball player is Greg Maddox. Barrett Knapps, left field, favorite player, Vladimir Guerrero. Michael Castleberry, first base, my favorite player is Andrew Jones. Jacob Roberts, right field, my favorite player is Vladimir Guerrero. Benji Farr, center field, my favorite player is Andrew Jones. Jamie Farr, catching today, and, I'm, and my favorite player is Ivan Rodriguez. Hi, my name is Cody Nix, my favorite, uh, I play second base, and my favorite player is Nomar Garcia Parra. Harrison, my name is Harrison Sharp, I play left field, my favorite player is Andrew Jones. And this team batting 331, they have to face this defense, Darnell. Paul Flory at first base. His favorite athlete is Shaquille O'Neal. Second base, Manuel Morales. He's a math whiz back at home, and he loves math. At third base, Diego De Leon. He wants to be a lawyer someday. That a boy. <laughs> and at short, Jesus Barrasso. He loves the X Games, and he's the catalyst of their ball club. Left field, Eliezer Navarro is hitless in the Junior League World Series. We're trying to do it defensively. Victor Miranda, who is the team leader, a very aggressive player. And Andy Chavez is out in right field. And his father is a police officer right there. Uh, so he's got to have a lot of discipline, you would think. The catcher is Angel Cisneros. And he's going to have his work cut out for him because the pitcher, Enar Atencio, throws a forkball among his repertoire. A nasty forkball. He throws a fastball, forkball, like you said, a curveball. When he's on, his curveball is nasty. And of all people, his favorite player is Robin Ventura. <laughs> that a boy. Robin's a, a, a great player. He's been a great player for a long time. Does that mean he doesn't mind watching home runs as long as they're not hit off him? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> They are as that Panama head coach, Atencio, a very intense man, as we know today. Very intense. He, he wasn't smiling a whole lot. He was concentrating heavily on the game. And with this team, I'd be a real confident guy because he's got a great team. He knows that Georgia won yesterday. Actually, in the 
U.S. Championship, and there's Danny Gilbert. His team won 19 to 12 in the U.S. Championship against California. Well, the best part of this uh, Panamanian team is their pitching against a very good hitting Georgia team. The first pitch of ball to Scott Morris. Let's go, baby. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. In the Junior League World Series. He takes way outside as a head 2 0. Morris had three hits in the U.S. Championship game. He gets on, he's dangerous. Uh, earlier in the regionals, he had five stolen bases. Yeah. And he's just taking there, getting a head 3 0. And he's a very aggressive hitter, but he will take a walk. Anything in that strike zone, he's, he's taking a good swing at. The 3 0 to Morris. There's a call strike. And I was talking to Danny Gilroy, the manager, saying that his team has never seen a fourth ball before. Morris takes way outside. He might not see the fourth ball, though. Tensio can't get ahead in the count. That's true. Gilroy says that uh, the strategy for his team is to look fastball and react to everything else. And really, he doesn't like his team swinging at breaking balls early in the count. Kevin Meredith steps in. He's batting 333 in the Junior League World Series. See Andrew Jones, his favorite player. Called strike 0 and 1. Since Cartersville is only 50 miles from Atlanta, you would think that most of these kids would be big fans of Atlanta Braves player, but that's players, but that's not the case. I mean, they like all different kinds of players. 0-1 to Meredith. In there for a call strike. 0-2. Just underway here, no score in the top of the first inning. You know, in the U.S. Championship, Georgia fell behind 5-0 after a half inning. This time they get to bat first. Swing and a miss, strike three. Meredith goes down on strikes, one away. Strike three, one away. Movement on this breaking pitch takes a lot off of it, pulls the string on it. Right about here, you can see him start to get out front, and then his front side leaves him. Nice pitch. It really dropped down for Atencio. You know, when talking to their manager before the game, the Panamanian manager, he said that he had they'd taken a good look at this ball club, and they're going to throw them fastballs away and a lot of breaking balls. You can see that's exactly what they're doing. There's Seth Malden at the plate. 278. Let's go, see his favorite player, Kurt Schilling. There's a breaking ball popped in the air, shallow left field. Back goes the shortstop, and Barrasso cannot catch it. He throws the second, not in time. So Barroso. going back on that ball, and he's known for being a good fielder, but just couldn't catch that one. Runners at first and second. One this away. is called looking before he will be the ball. He's in 14, perfect position. Tyler he's already Gilbert. looking to see where he's throwing the ball before he actually catches it. Great play by the left fielder by being there to back him up and made a strong throw to second base. Little offline, which pulled the second baseman off the back. So first and second, one away for the cleanup hitter, Tyler Gilreath, who's batting 529 in the Junior League World Series. He grounds one in the hole at shortstop. Barroso feels throws to third. Oh, he got him. Nice play by Barroso to make up for the error. He went in the hole and he made the right decision to go to third base, the easier play. Nice play, Joe. Just that quick. A player of his caliber. Look at the range here. It goes deep in the hole. Makes a good throw to third base. The thing there is, is that he total and complete concentration. You make an error. You don't let it go to the next play. He gets the ball, makes a good throw. Now he's got a chance to get his team out of the inning without him scoring any run. Here is Barrett Naps, who's batting 526 in the Junior League World Series. Naps. Great athlete, he is the fullback on the football team, but he was telling me that he really likes baseball a lot better than football. There goes the runner from second, pitch inside, throw to third, safe. And on the second base goes Gilreath. So Malden stealing second, and then Gilreath, after seeing that throw being high, just took second base with two men in scoring position now. 
This is a very good play by the third baseman. Nice jump by the runner. Jumps, keeps this ball, never mind the runner. Going to second base. He's just more apt to catch the ball, you know, get his feet underneath him and not throw the ball away. Very nice play by the third baseman. Here's a pitch to Naps. Cold strike. One and one to Barrett Naps. And the way Barrett's swinging, you know, pitching around him in a situation like this would not be bad because he's swinging the bat as good as anybody in this tournament. In the U.S. Championship, he hit a big three-run homer. Breaking ball misses high. Two and one to Naps. Naps went three for four in the U.S. Championship. He fouls it near the plate. It's two and two to Naps. This is a very confident Georgia team. They are, yes sir, no sir, thank you ma'am, right. thank you sir, everything. They go to, to study hall an hour and a half a day. They, they make sure they, they go to study hall. The schools are already started in Georgia, so they make sure they get their schoolwork done too. Atencio ready. Here comes the 2 2 to Naps. All speed pitch back to the mound. And he plays at first base. A little high throw. They got him, but a good play there on the first base back by Flores to come down. And the inning is over. No runs, no hits, one error, and two left on base. At the end of one half inning, no score in the Junior League World Series. No scores. We go to the bottom of the first inning. Panama coming up. And Panama having to make a long trip, as you can see where they are on the globe. And here is the starting lineup for Panama. Raúl Atencio, manager. Abraham Espinosa, coach. Valerio Franco, coach. Es un barroso, short stop, no más García Parra. Diego de León, third base. Mariano Rivera. Víctor Miranda, third field. Steve Philly. Ángel Cisnero, catcher, Derek Jeter. Andy Sánchez, right field. Ichiro Suzuki. Einar Atencio, pitcher, Roy Ventura. Paul Flores, first base, Jason Jambi. Elias Navarro, left field, Randy Jones. Manuel Morales, second base, Roberto Lomar. Chermo de Prua, pitcher, Mariano Rivera. Nelson Mendes, pitcher, Roger Clemens. Jack Clark, left field, Carlos Lee. Joel Castillo, pitcher, Randy Johnson. Jorge Mendoza, first base, Einar, Einar Díaz. And uh, defense for Georgia, slick fielding Michael Castleberry at first base. Second base, Kevin Meredith. He's the only guy that has a lucky undershirt and has not washed it since All Stars began. Oof. So his <laughs> buddies are loving him. Third base, Seth Malden. His favorite athlete is Anna Kornikova. And shortstop Scott Morris. And his favorite TV show is Baseball Tonight. Now, Georgia moved Benji Farr into left field because he has a foot injury. So, a little uh, change in. Barrett Knapps is playing out in center field, and he is the fastest runner on the team. There you see Barrett Knapps. And Jacob Roberts, the best outfielder on this team. Then behind the plate, Jamie Farr, who didn't catch before this year, so has made a lot of improvement this year. And he will be catching Tyler Gilreath. And Gilreath had a rough first inning in the U.S. Championship. But he is ready to go. He has uh, paid attention to Panama, watched a little bit of their game, and he has a pretty good strategy. He wants to work the corners today. Yes, he does, and he's a three-pitch pitcher, pitcher, fastball, two-seam fastball, and curveball. His best pitch is his two-seam fastball. He'll drop down every now and then to get a little bit more movement, and that's how he keeps the hitters off balance. He threw a no-hitter in the district final on the way to Taylor, Michigan. Jesus Barroso to lead it off. We talked about how he Field so well. well at the plate, he's batting 500 in the Junior League World Series. He takes outside ball one. You know, one thing about this Panama team, they have no home runs in this tournament, but they're hitting 347. So they're not going to hit for power, but they'll get on base. Called strike, one and one to Barroso. Concentrate on the mid, concentrate on the power mid, man. 
Moroso, his nickname is Chucky. And he loves that movie. He has the killer instinct, just like Chucky. Bluff to Bun and the pitch outside, two and one. Chucky. <laughs> Everything wow. to the mitt, Ty. Everything to the mitt. Now, come on. You know what was interesting is Barroso said he'd like to play for the Montreal Expos. And I said, wow, I mean, I mean, they might be contracted. But he said the reason is Vladimir Guerrero. He really likes Vladimir Guerrero and uh, Nomar Garcia Park. Base hit right field. Well, maybe not. Safe. <laughs> Roberts gunned it into first base. Barroso is safe. And just like you said, right fielder is the best defensive outfielder they have and this is a very nice play he charges this ball comes up and throws a strike to first base wow he just missed getting the speedy Barroso. you better run it out when you hit one into right field <laughs> that's for sure diego de leon at the plate and throw to first back in standing up is Barroso. and these guys will run panama is known for stealing a lot of bases and they've done a lot of that this tournament that's a pretty good lead at first base for Barroso. Back in, standing up safe. Nice one-way lead. Get him, give him a chance to see what the pitcher's got, what kind of move he has, so that he knows that he's he's only going back to first and not stealing the base. Throw over again. He's back safe. Now, Barroso wants time as he dusts himself off over at first base. And the good part about that is now Barroso knows exactly how far he can go. I mean, he just got back, had to dive back, and now he knows, like I said, just how far he can get out there, just in case. Well, the pressure is going to be on the catcher, Jamie Farr. Runner is not going. Called strike to De Leon, 0 and 1. But it's got to be tough for Jamie Farr, a catcher in his first year, to you know learn how to play the position. And now here he is in the Junior League World Series, and you have the speedy runner at first base. De Leon has picked a good favorite player, Alfonso Soriano. What a year he's having for the Yankees. Indeed. A lot of throws to first here by Gilry. And even a bigger lead now for Barroso. There he goes. Called strike. No throw to second as far as juggled it. I don't think he would have had a chance anyway because Barroso had a good jump. Yes, he did. He had about three or four steps before he released the ball. And it's all in getting the right pitch and picking counts and getting getting a good pitch to run on. He gets a nice breaking ball to run on that's running in on the batter. Ball and no throw. Comebacker, Gilry checks second, throws to first. In time, De Leon is out number one. No score here in the bottom of the first inning. And here's what's happened as Cartersville, Georgia has been averaging nine runs a game, batting 331 in Panama. The pitching, 0.54 ERA. So who's going to win out in this game? Pitch outside to Miranda, 1-0. Oh. Well, as much baseball as me and you watch, generally good pitching beats good hitting, but we've seen some games here that have been ridiculous as far as run scored, so nobody knows. <laughs> Throw to second, not in time. Well, I don't think that Georgia is phased by anything uh, as far as falling behind in a game, even if Panama has the good pitching. They've been able to come back. Fly ball left field. Coming in a step is far to make the catch. And Miranda is out number two. Now Angel Cisneros will be there. And he is batting 500 in this Junior League World Series. And boy, he is really a sharp kid. When asked who he'd like to meet, he said Bill Gates. He's a computer whiz. He's born in Cuba. Bill Gates. Man. <laughs> I'd like to meet Bill myself. <laughs> Ball one to Cisneros. His nickname is Cuba. They say he's a great catcher, and watching him the last couple of days, he's done a great job of blocking balls, has a great arm. You know, he works the pitchers. He's just a good all-around player. Good breaking ball right down the middle call strike. One and one to the Panama cleanup hitter, Cisneros. Oh, hit target, baby. Hit target now. Let's go. 
Now Gilreath deals the 1-1, one, one, fouled back out of play, 1-2. and two. Gilreath was saying that even though he gave up the five runs yesterday, rather than the U.S. Championship against California, in the first inning, he felt, well, even though that didn't go so well, at least I'm able to pitch in the championship game now because I didn't go too long. Well, that's the good part of throwing less than an inning. You give up five runs, but then, like you said, he's in the championship game, getting a chance to start and giving his, chance, his team a chance to win. Cisneros takes high, two and two. Gary threw a shutout in the state tournament. Joe, and I think psychologically, you know, it's better for him to get right back out on the mound so that you can show what you got. Anytime you have to think two or three days of, man, what did, what did I do wrong? Did I hang a pitch? Did I not get the ball where I wanted to? He's right back out there, and he gets a chance to redeem himself. Runner at second, two down. Pitch, grounded to shortstop. Tough bounce for Morris. Knocks it down, no play at first, so everybody's safe. Runners at first and third with two down. Looks like it hit something in the dirt there. That was a tough bounce. Tough bounce. The best thing is that he kept it in front of him to keep the runner from scoring. A lot of times, you get that feel for having a bad hop. This ball's hit real hard in between hop, and he keeps it in front of him. You know, his body's square to the target. Very nice job of keeping the ball in front of him. Now he rushes to get the ball under control, bare hands it. A lot of kids grab that ball with their glove and end up bobbling it and gives them the other team a chance to score a run. But very good job on his part about keeping that ball in front of him. So both shortstops have made an error in the first Six. inning. And the Panama team with an opportunity first and third, two down, and Andy Sanchez at the plate to throw to first and back in safe is Cisneros. Should Gilreath be worried about the catcher running at first base? Here's a drive, left field, far going back. In front of the warning track, makes the grab, and that retires the side. No runs, one hit, one error, and two left on base. At the end of one full inning in the Junior League World Series, nothing, nothing. No scores, we go to the top of the second inning. You see the wind blowing in a little bit from left field. That might have affected that last fly ball. Maybe if the wind was blowing out, it might have been a homer for Sanchez. There is Atencio facing six, seven, and eight in the order. Michael Castleberry leading it off. First pitch to Castleberry, a breaking ball in there for a called strike, 0 and 1. Joe, this is a real good fastball hitting Georgia team. And they're going to see a steady diet of breaking balls today. But well, there's a fastball for a called strike, and it's 0-2. Okay. Castleberry hitting 350 in the Junior League World Series and classified as a fly ball hitter. 0-2 to Castleberry. All-speed pitch grounded to shortstop. Barroso has it. Lobs it over to first. He got him. One away. And here's the format, nine teams participating in two pools, and the winner of each pool plays in the championship. We have Georgia and Panama making their way here. Panama able to beat Poland to get here, and Georgia winning over California in a wild game in the U.S. Championship. Swing and a miss by Roberts, 0-1 the count to Jacob Roberts. Georgia has trailed in four of the five games in the tournament. But here they are in the championship. They were down 7-0 in a regional in 111-7. Ground ball third base. Nice stop by De Leon. Long throw to first. He got him. Two down. Ground ball to the third base, but long throw over to the first, and he got him. Two away. That'll bring up. It's a very nice play by third baseman. There's that split finger of fork ball. Rolled over to the third baseman, sets his feet in foul territory, throws a strike over to first base. Nice, nice play. Sets his feet, steps, takes his time, throws a strike to first. Ground ball right side, fielded by the first baseman, Flores, and gets to the bag in plenty of time to beat Farr. It's a one, two, three inning for Georgia. Nothing, nothing after an inning and a half.
Georgia nothing, Panama nothing as we go to the bottom of the second inning here in Taylor, Michigan. And there are six umpires for this championship. They come from all over the place and they are volunteers. They do a nice job. Yes, they do. They really do. Anar Atencio will lead it off for Panama. And we were talking to the umpires and they were saying that it's actually more difficult when you have six umpires. They really have to be coordinated as to who is going to call what. Well, in a lot of cases, they go with two-man crews. You know, so now you're, you're running in places that you know, other umpires are, so you just have to get a feel for each other. One and one to Atencio, the starting pitcher for Panama. And this is why he likes Robin Ventura. When he gets to come to the plate, he wants to emulate Robin. Two and one to count. Robin's on fire right now. <laughs> He's playing very well for the Yankees. There's Tyler Gilreath. The two one to Atencio. Outside, three and one. Atencio is a good athlete. He plays basketball too. And he is a very patient hitter. He has a team high five walks in the Junior League World Series, his teammates rooting him on. There is ball four. That's the first walk for Gilreath, and a leadoff man aboard for Panama here in the second. See, that's the good part that he's on. The bad part is, is that he's pitching, and it's a humid, hot day. Right. And you get out on the base pads, and you're running around, and you get a little tired. Later on in the game, that might prove uh, costly for either team once they get their pitchers on base. Here is Paul Flores, throw to first, and back in safe is Atencio. Flores, one for four. He was benched the other day. Bon attempt, back to the mound, caught, throw to first for two, got him. Double play, Gilreath caught it, got rid of it quickly. Atencio is doubled off. Completion of the double play. No, he just didn't get it down, Darnell. Did not get it down. Kind of just kind of jabbed at the ball, which in turn makes you hit the ball harder than you want to. It takes the deadening out of the ball. And as you can see, he got doubled up. Tough base running play on his part. Anytime the ball's in the air on a bunt, you have to freeze and make sure the ball is on the ground. Foul ball off the foot of Navarro. 0 and 1 the count. And as a bunter, Joe, also in that situation, you're just trying to get the ball on the ground somewhere except directly back to the pitcher. And that's called bunting angles. And as you can see, he had a tough one bunting the ball right back to the pitcher. One and one to Navarro. Well, that might be why he has not endeared himself to the manager, Raul Atencio, and was benched for the game against Poland, a game that determined who would get here to the championship. Foul back by Navarro. One and two the count. But also remember, in, in big situations, you go to your big players, and he's obviously one of his big players if he's back in there in the championship game. Occasionally, you have to sit a player down for a little minor stuff like that just to kind of wake him up. Chopper to short. Morris comes in on the run to first. High throw. Nice play by Castleberry coming off the bag and making the tag. And that retires the side. Your first baseman is your best friend, as you see right here. At the end of two, no score. Nothing, nothing as we go to the top of the third inning in the Junior League World Series. And Atencio in the first inning left a couple of men on base, throwing 16 pitches, an easy one, two, three inning in the second. Certainly Georgia wants to be patient with Atencio, make him work like they did in the first inning. Jamie Farr at the plate. No, not the uh, actor from MASH. <laughs> Called strike to Jamie Farr, 0-1. Oh, we mentioned that he's just started to catch and he already really likes Pudge Rodriguez. Ground ball, third base at weekly coming in De Leon. And he has the out at first base. Third base went over to first. One away. That's six in a row retired by Atencio. Has not allowed a base hit. A walk and an error that had the runners on base in the first inning. Atencio's really mixing his pitches well, taking a little off, putting a little on, hitting the corners, not leaving a whole lot of pitches out over the plate. 
because when he, if he starts doing that, this is a strong fastball hitting Georgia team. Top of the order now, Scott Morris takes low for a ball, 1-0. He walked in the first inning. Nothing, nothing here in the top of the third. Morris swings and grounds one up the middle, not hit hard. Fielded by Barroso, throws the first, he got him. Two down and a lot of ground ball outs for Atencio. Now coming to bat, Kevin Merida. He's keeping the ball down. Yes, he is. He really is. He mixes pitches very well again. Good pitching beats good hitting. And this is a fine play by the shortstop, but out on, everybody's out on the front foot. Ground ball by Meredith. Fielded by Morales. He throws him out. Again, it's an easy one, two, three inning. And eight of the nine outs have been ground outs for Atencio. At the end of two and a half, Georgia nothing, Panama nothing. Georgia nothing, Panama nothing in the Junior League World Series Championship as we go to the bottom of the third and Manuel Morales will lead it off. The number nine hitter, two for eight in the Junior League World Series. Panama with two base hits. Georgia no hits so far. Called strike to Morales, 0-1. So it seems like this game is going the way that Panama would want. A low scoring game, you know, they're using their pitching so far. And their pitchers making them hit the ball on the ground and using his defense. A shot foul. 0-2 to Morales. Quickly 0-2. Both pitchers are throwing strikes. And the pitcher's best friend is a ground ball. And, it, and these infielders are catching the ground balls, and these pitchers are throwing strikes. That's what Gilroy said he had trouble with in the U.S. championship. Just missed outside. 1-2. He said he kept the ball up too much. And that's how come... Yukaipa, California went ahead 5-0 after a half inning, but Georgia came back and won that game 19-12. That's unlike his idol, Greg Maddox, who's known for keeping the ball down. Strike three called. Beautiful breaking ball by Gilreath, his first strikeout. It's a nice backdoor breaking ball. Kind of throws the ball at the hitter and breaks over the inside corner of the plate where the batter kind of backs out. His upper body's gone, so he has no chance of swinging this pitch. Very nice pitch. Ooh, really snapped it off. Here's Jesus Sparoso. Leadoff man. Nice drag punt. Third base side. Charging Malden. Throws the first not nearly in time. That's a perfect bump by Barroso. He's two for two, two singles. And now with his speed, he can get into scoring position. Small ball at its finest. Very nice play. He does whatever it takes. If it takes getting a hit, he does that. And here he drops this ball down. Very nice bunt with an actuality. A third baseman could have held on to that ball because he's three steps by the base. He did not show the bunt until the last second. He executed it perfectly. That's part of being the catalyst. You, you do things that people don't expect, but they expect it. They're so used to seeing it, but then again, they're not, the other team's not, not expecting it. So you just have to get a feel for who your guy is and what his game is, and his game is just this, being the catalyst for this ball club. There are professional hitters who can't bunt that well. I mean, that was a good bunt. Side, That's true. <laughs> me, me included. I couldn't, I couldn't bunt like that. Barroso draws the throw at first base. And back in the first inning, Gilreath made several throws over to first base to keep him close. But still, Barroso stole second. A throw to first. Gets by Castleberry. Barroso on his way to second. He'll get there easily. And that's the inherent danger of trying to pick the runner off. Sooner or later, you might make a bad throw. We'll see with Barroso, it's, he's not the kind of player that does silly things. So you're trying not to do silly things like that, like throw the ball away. You're just trying to keep him close rather than try and pick him off. De Leon ahead 1-0, and, oh, and here's that throw. This is a bad throw off to the left of the first baseman. Not a play that he, he did the best that he could in trying to knock that ball down and keeping it from rolling down, down in the bullpen. De Leon takes a called strike, 1-1. One and one. The one thing that we, I think, have noticed about Gilreath is that he does not get flustered. I mean, after a situation like that, bunt single error, some pitchers would get flustered in this situation. Pitch high, two and one. He's very composed. He knows what he wants to do. He doesn't variate from it a whole lot. Just like a Greg Maddox, where Greg is not giving in. Him and, and, and Glavin do not give in. If they're going outside, they're going outside. They're staying with their strength. They're not going to go to your strength. 
Foul back, and De Leon has a count of two and two. And Diego De Leon here, his father, Candelario De Leon, was a great pitcher in the 70s and 80s with the national team in Panama. The 2-2, two -two, strike three call. That pitch was down low, and De Leon taking it. Second strikeout of the inning for Gilreath, the second of the game, and both looking. Back to that backdoor breaking ball throw it at the hitter. And the legs here, just no chance of swinging at that pitch. He thought it was a little low, but he's not a tall guy anyway, so. Miranda, it's a line shot in the right center field. That's a base hit in the gap. Goes to the fence. In to score is Barroso. Knapp playing it in, getting to second base, standing up with an RBI double is Miranda. It's one to nothing, Panama. This is a real good swing. Ball up in the strike zone, drives this ball to right center field. But if you look back on the play before where you tried to pick the runner off, if you don't try and pick the runner off, the runner scores in this situation. Now you have runners on second and third, but instead you have a run in and a runner on second base. And now the cleanup hitter up there, Angel Cisneros. And he was credited with a single in the first inning and a bad hop to the shortstop Morris. Two down and a runner at second base. First pitch to Cisneros, breaking ball, called strike on the inside corner, all in one. And Gilreath really has the breaking ball working pretty well. He may go to that more often. Yes, he does. Pitch outside, one and one to Cisneros. And there is Melinda Gilreath, Tyler's mom, looking on. And of course, Tyler's dad is the manager, Danny Gilreath, all in the family. A pitch inside, almost hit. Cisneros gets by the catcher far on the third. Goes Miranda. A wild pitch by Gilry. This is a nasty pitch. Runs in hard. That two seamer. But the toughest part is the catcher didn't turn his glove in. He turned it out and almost broke his thumb, it looked like. Breaking ball way outside. And that's a nice stop by far. That's a very nice stop considering the play before you let a ball get by you and there the ball's in the other batter's box and you dive and keep the ball in front of you. Very good play. You see him looking into the dugout. Get a pitch call. Called strike. In the outside corner Cisneros thought it was ball four. He trotted several steps towards first base. Knowing him he wants to hit. <laughs> That's just a little aberration, right? Man, okay, I really get to hit now. Two balls, two strikes, the pitch. Little floater over the first baseman, caught by Castleberry, and the inning is over. But Panama breaks through for the first run of the game. They do it on a couple of base hits, one error, and a man left at third. And here it is, the RBI double by Miranda. At the end of three, it's one to nothing, Panama. one nothing Panama here in Taylor, Michigan in the Junior League World Series. The fans are pumped up about this close game and Georgia looking for its first hit. We got a new first baseman, Joel Castillo, comes into the game, replacing Flores. And out in left field, Jack Clark replacing Navarro. Hey, Jack Clark, he used to be my favorite player with the Giants. Jack, Jack shaves pretty well now. <laughs> Seth Malden. Takes low and away, 1-0. Now Tencio really done a nice job. He's is not allowed to hit, and he has eight of his nine outs on ground balls. The other out of strikeout. Breaking ball misses outside. An appeal down to the first base umpire, and Mike Pixley says no swing, 2-0. Alden hit three home runs in the state tournament. Takes low, 3-0. That's his mom, Sharon Malden, looking on. You can tell she's a little nervous. Three-0 to Malden. Right down the middle, called strike, 3-1. 
Alden works a lot with weights. And has improved his power. Chopper off the plate towards the mound. Atencio fields, throws high at first. Nice play by Castillo. He will catch it and come back down on the back. One away. We've seen some high throws, and I think that some of the players, you know, they get a little nervous in a championship game, and they lob it over there, and instead of just, just throw it over, you know, as hard as you can. I don't know if he's nervous or just a little lackadaisical in knowing that he's got another out. I'm not sure, but like you said, in that situation, just catch the ball and throw the ball. You're just playing catch. Tyler Gilreath at the plate. And it takes inside, 1-0. Oh. Gilreath is saying that he really likes to pull the ball. It takes outside corner, 1-1. One one. Maybe they know the scouting court. Tensio works him away. And the first time up, Gilreath did ground to the left side. And a backdoor breaking ball there misses, two and one. So Georgia didn't really get a chance to look at Panama, but Panama got a chance to watch them play right. in the semifinals, and, and they have a pretty good idea how they want to pitch their players. Big breaking ball misses. A little bit high, three and one to Gilreath. Barrett Knapps on deck. We talked about the one-two punch. Beginning, uh, we were saying that Gilreath and Knapps look out. They can hit for power. 3-1 to Gilreath, called strike, three. Shortstop, Barroso is playing towards the middle. He knows that Gilreath is really a pull hitter. See that? The 3-2 pitch bounced on the first base side. Castillo Fields flips it over to the pitcher at first. They caught him, a little stutter step there for Atencio. Almost missed the bag, two down. Well, Castillo, he just comes into the game, and right away he's involved heavily. He hits this Next split minute, finger or fork ball into Barrett the ground, Nash. and you can see the pitcher go, gets right over, gets in the right position, covers first base, inside part of the out to the outside part of the bag. He did everything right except that. But getting over and letting his first baseman feel the ball and being in position so the first baseman have to run and tag the base. You know, think about it. How many 13 and 14 year olds do you know that throw a splitter, a fork ball, as we've been talking about? Tough to make that adjustment if you're Georgia. Oh, not that many, considering Roger Craig probably mastered that pitch probably 17, 18 years ago with Jack Morris pitching for the Tigers. But it puts a lot of stress and pressure on the elbow, and I'm shocked at this young of an age that kids are throwing that I was going to say, you coach high school players now, Darnell. Would you even recommend it for high school players? Would not recommend that pitch for a while. Generally, you wait till you get to the big leagues, and you, and you have and you throw in pitches, and they're on you a lot, and you're just getting the pitch or need a pitch to get you off of a pitch, and, and that makes it tough to throw that pitch because, like we said, it does put a lot of pressure on your elbow. Two and one now to Naps with two down and nobody on. Old strike on the outside corner, two and two. Boy, does Atencio hit the corners well. So he's looking for another one, two, three inning. The pitch chopped over third. In the hole, grabbed by Barroso, and he has no play at first. There's the first base hit for Georgia. There's his mom, she's happy. Barrett Knapp's mom looking on. Look at the range on this shortstop. The ball's bounced over, said Barroso is way out in the outfield to get this ball. So if there's any attempt to round in the bag, he's out at first base. That was after 10 straight had been retired. Here's Michael Castleberry. It's a seven inning game, remember. One nothing Panama. We're in the top of the fourth. Throw the first knot in time. Panama, even though Atencio has been pitching well, they have a pitcher in the bullpen. There goes the runner, called strike, throw to second, wide, it hits the runner. Safe is Naps as Cisneros did not get a good throw off to second base, and now the time run in scoring position with two down. It's a nice jump here by Naps. All the way through the base, the base, the ball runs into the runner and hits him. Not attempt, no attempt to go to third base, but 
Very good job of reading the pitcher on that pitch. And Naps talked about that before the game, how the jump is the most That's important thing. Foul ball on the right side by Castleberry, one and two the count. He said he didn't mind really about taking a big lead. It's that he really wanted to get a good jump, and that's how he's been successful stealing bases. That was his fifth stolen base of the Junior League World Series, and that's a key one here in this one nothing. And this is a, a much different game than what Georgia had in the U.S. Championship when runs are scored all over the place. A stolen base like that is huge, huge. And when you're stealing bases, there's two things. You want to make sure you get a good jump, and you want to make sure that you get a good lead. And the most important of the two is making sure you get a good jump. If you can get two or three steps on a pitcher, more times than not, you're going to be safe. One ball, two strikes to Castleberry. Tensio shaking off his sign from Cisneros. Now likes this. Here's the pitch. Ground ball shortstop. Barroso fields, sets himself, and throws out Castleberry for the final out. Yet another ground ball out. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. It's one to nothing, Panama. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning here in Taylor, Michigan for the Junior League World Series Championship. Remember, it's a seven inning game. Andy Sanchez is leading it off for Panama. 0 for 1, he flies the left his first time up. Ground ball back to the mound, grabbed by Gilreath. And he throws out Sanchez. One pitch, one away for Gilreath. Well, certainly Panama has turned out some terrific players, including Rod Carew, Hall of Famer. Acted in 1991, uh, 3,053 hits in his career. But look at the other players from Panama, Mariano Rivera, Ramiro Mendoza. It's a good list. Rod numbers are ridiculous. Hall of Fame in 1991, 3,053 hits, hit 315 straight years, 328 lifetime hitter, and 18 straight all-star games. Not a bad career. He was a pretty good pitching coach, too, for a while there were the Angels. There's the Panama fans. 2-0 to Atencio, right down the middle, called strike two and one. Atencio swings and fouls it, two and two to Atencio. You know, this Junior League World Series has had some big names that have played in it. Gary Sheffield, Derek Bell, they played on the same team back in 82 for Belmont Heights, Florida. And Jose Valentin played in this Championship back in 83 for Puerto Rico. 2-2 to two, two Atencio. Good breaking ball. Strike three called. Third strikeout for Gilreath. They've all been caught looking. Gilreath is doing a great job of varying his angles. Nice breaking pitch. This is nasty. He tries to duck this pitch. This is... Probably about belt high, middle end, but if you throw the ball at the batter, it's kind of deceiving because he's dropping down somewhat. So he's doing a great job of mixing his angles and his pitches. Joel Castillo at the plate. He came in defensively at first base and batting for the first time, a left-handed hitter. 0-1 to Castillo, swing and a miss. Pitch was up and in, 0-2. I guess the same rules apply. A lefty at this level, if you pitch him up and in, it'll be tough. It will be tough. That was an ugly swing there. 0-2 to Castillo, up and away, 1-2. and two. There's the Panama cheering section. They came a long way to Taylor, Michigan, a suburb of Detroit. Strike three call to Castillo. A 1-2-3 inning for Gilreath. Castillo could not believe that call. Four Ks for Gilreath. Gilry keeping his team in the game at the end of four. It's one to nothing, Panama. Their leadoff batter will be the right fielder, number nine, Jacob. One Roberts. nothing, Panama, as we go to the top of the fifth inning here in Taylor, Michigan at Heritage Park where they have 
held the Junior League World Series for 22 years now. I'm Joe Castellano along with Darnell Coles. And as you see, Cartersville, Georgia, which is near Atlanta. They're in the maroon uniforms, Panama on the green. Called strike to Jacob Roberts. 0-1 the count. Atencio deals, and there's another called strike 0-2. Atencio has given up just one base hit, and he's had 11 ground ball outs out of his 12 outs. The other out was a strikeout, so nobody's been able to hit the ball in the air. I think the only ball hit in the air was the double to right center field. Ground ball, third base. De Leon throws over to first. He got him. Ground ball, third base, and over to first. One away. Well, you're probably asking, what is Junior League? Well, 13 and 14 year olds, right after Little League, seven inning games, and Major League Dimensions for the first time. That's always tough. I mean, the biggest thing is, how do you lead off a base? You've never done that before. <laughs> That's true. Called strike to Benji Farr, 0 and 1 to count. Ground ball foul on the third base side, 0-2. Joe, like we talked about earlier, this plays into Panama's hand, it being a one-run game, but it also plays into Georgia's hand in that they're always one swing away with the firepower that they have in these home run hitters on their ball club. 0-2 to far, ground ball hit hard. Nice stop by De Leon on that high hop. He throws the first, he got him. But you know, you can get the ground balls. That's fine and dandy, but you have to have the plays by your defense, and what a play by De Leon. This is a nice play. Big leaguers don't make this play. Ground ball to third, on his knee, bad hop. Steps up, sets his feet, and throws a strike to first base. But he was in, too, look. He I mean, was in close, 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 steps, takes his time, knows who's running, boom. Strike to first base. He's in close and it came up quickly on him. That's a ball to Harrison Sharp. Sharp is pinch hitting for Jamie Farr. De Leon at third, a big key for Panama to hold on to the one nothing lead here in the top of the fifth. This left side of Panama, De Leon and Barroso, it's tough getting the ground ball through there. Swing and a miss. Stellar offensive players on that side of the infield. Sharp trying to get on here with the top of the order. Up next. Pitch to Sharp in the dirt. Two and one. Now the two one to Sharp. Call strike on the outside corner. Two and two. You know, Atencio walked the first batter Morris, but since then he's been in control. He's been able to throw the ball exactly where he wants to. Like we talked about, he threw 16 pitches in the first inning. Sharp grounds one left side, wrong player to hit it to. De Leon to his left, throws him out. De Leon makes all three plays in a 1-2-3 inning. 14 of the 15 outs have been ground ball outs for Atencio. Looks like Darnell Coles. Yeah, it does. <laughs> One nothing Panama as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Go. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's tasty. <laughs> Might as well. Nice day to watch baseball and eat. And Panama up one nothing. Gilreath has done a nice job of keeping it that way. Had the one, two, three, fourth with a couple of strikeouts. And now he will face Nelson Mendez. Mendez is pinch hitting for Jack Clark. He pinch hit for Jack Clark? Yeah, I was going to say. I don't know if I'd ever pinch hit for Jack Clark. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Mendez bounces one up the middle, past the diving Morris into center field base hit. That's the fifth hit for Panama. 
Georgia with only one hit in the game. Next batter will be the second baseman, number six, Manuel Morales. Runner at first, nobody out. Manuel Morales will step in now. The number nine hitter struck out looking in the third. Good time to bunt late in the game, try and move a runner. And he's thinking the same way. Bunts it foul back of the plate, 0 and 1. His manager, Raul Atencio, not happy that Morales didn't get that bunt down. Although, I don't know when he looks at it. He, he always looks that intense right there. He's always got his game face on. He's no relation to the pitcher, the starting pitcher for Panama, Eno Artencio. Mendez at first, nobody out. Bluff to bunt, and then a foul back. 0-2 to Morales, teaching him the butcher boy play a little bit there, right? The slug bunt, which is when the third baseman charges, the, the hitter has an option to get bunt the ball target, or target. pull the ball at the third baseman. And generally, the third baseman there, tries to get out of the there, way because he's so close to the hitter. Bunt at third base side, Malden Fields goes over the first. And they got him, but the sacrifice is successful going 5-3. And Mendez now at second. 0-2 oh, sacrifice. Yeah, he wasn't worried about fouling that one off and striking out. New catcher, well actually it's the catcher from before, Jamie Farr. As he left for a pitch hitter but came back. And that's something you can do, of course, because here's the substitution rule. Any player who has been removed from the game may return once in the same position in the batting order. As long as the substitute has played defensively for three consecutive outs. Or has batted the pitch outside, 1-0. Oh. Jesus Barroso, two for two. Drives one deep down the left field line. Far going way back. If it stays fair, it's gone. It bounces and goes over the wall for a double. Well, I thought it was hit well enough, but not well enough to get out of that. Wind blowing in from left. Ground rule double. Mendez scores. It's 2 to nothing. Panama. Nice swing here, fastball in. Hits this ball hard. I think that may have been a hanging breaking ball. I think that's exactly what that was. And hits that ball up in the wind. Ball kind of knocks it down. The wind kind of knocks it down a little bit. That ball hit real hard. Well, I'll tell you, Georgia fortunate that the wind's blowing in because that ball was hit hard. Small ball at its finest, you get them. They get you thinking that they can't hit the ball out of the ballpark and they get as close as they've got this whole series to hitting the ball out of the ballpark for a ground rule double. Now uh, Kilreath facing Diego De Leon, who's had a spectacular game defensively. He grounds one up the middle, base hit center field. Barroso was waiting to see if it would go through, so he gets the third base and holds up. It's first and third with one out. And that's three hits in the inning off Gilry. As a base runner, it makes it tough because you have to make sure in a situation like that that the ball gets by the pitcher. You can see the runner hesitate here. He's making sure the ball gets by the pitcher, and now he sees the ball's out in the outfit, and now he continues on to third. Here's Good Miranda. base runner. Miranda one for two, RBI double. Bluffs a bunt, runner going from first no throw. Throw back to the pitcher gets away, but backed up by the shortstop Morris. So De Leon steals second base, and now it's second and third with one out. Yeah, three players backing that play up. That's teamwork. In a lot of cases, you have one player, he bobbles the ball, misses it, and you know doesn't go after it, and now you, they score an easy run. In this case, they had three guys there trying to keep that run from scoring. Field comes in. Two to nothing, Panama. Georgia can ill afford to give up another run. Pop up, third base side, Malden in foul territory. Does he have room? Yes! Nice catch by Malden right at the fence. Two down. This is a very nice play. He checks himself, he leans out 
puts his hand on the fence, never mind catching the ball. The important part is not getting hurt. He puts his hand out on the fence just so that he doesn't hurt himself so he knows where he's at. Good play. Ground ball, second base by Cisneros. Meredith fields and throws him out. So Gilreath gets out of it without any further damage, but Panama adds a run on three bases. They leave two in scoring position. We played five, it's two to nothing, Panama. Two nothing, Panama leading Georgia. And Panama out hitting Georgia, seven to one. And Georgia normally a team that hits the ball real well. In fact, they came into this Junior League World Series championship with a 331 team batting average. Atencio has put a stop to that. And a called strike to Scott Morris, the leadoff hitter, 0 and 1. Atencio's put a stop to that in a hurry, mixing his pitches very well. Ground ball, shortstop, bobbled and not played by Barroso. Can't make the play at first, so Morris is on at first base. And that was key for Georgia to get the leadoff man on on the error by Barroso, his second error of the game. This ball's hit hard, but Barroso stops a little shy, ends up on his heels, and the ball kind of plays him instead of him playing the ball. Now Kevin Meredith, 0 for 2, he has struck out, grounded to second. The sixth inning of a seven-inning game. Throw to first, Morris back in safe. But it doesn't take much for this Georgia team to get back in the ball game. Meredith, the tying run at the plate. There goes the run. Swing and a miss. Throw to second, into center field. Bad throw by Cisneros. On to third goes Morris. Beats the throw by Miranda. So Georgia trying to make things happen. And that was a hit and run too because Meredith was swinging no matter what it looked like. You have to do a lot of things to get your team going for a home run hitting team. They're trying to play small ball themselves. Ball's thrown in the right center field. Wynn kind of caught this ball a little bit. Ends up on third base with no outs. You can see Cisneros not happy with his throw. And the manager coming out is Raul Atencio wants to talk things over. Now the infield comes in. Do you agree with that, Darnell? Up by two, bringing the infield in? That's a struggle with six in the sixth inning. You're trying, you, if this run scores, you're still up by one. I'm, if I'm managing, I'm giving away a run to get it out. Right, you would have played back. That's exactly right. 0-1 to Meredith. It's high, 1-1. One one. This Panama pitching staff has gone 31 innings in the Junior League World Series and given up just two earned runs. Breaking ball, popped up. Third baseman De Leon getting under it. He has it for the first out. It's the rare time that Georgia's hit the ball in the air. Now the number three hitter, Seth Malden. He has power, hit three homers in the state tournament. He's 0 for 2 in this game. He's reached on an error by the shortstop, Barroso, and he has grounded to first. On earth third and one out, Panama leading 2 to nothing. Let's go, Seth, you can do it now. Let's go. Georgia realizing that. You need to get something here. Ground ball, base hit left field. Morris scores from third base. Seth Malden, an RBI single. It's two to one, Panama. Joe, and that's why you don't have the infield and that's in in that situation. Because in a situation like that, you take it out, you give them a run, you're giving them a run anyway with, with the infield in. This is a base hit that's hit to routine shortstop and your shortstop makes this play as good a shortstop as Barroso is. And Gilreath getting hit by a pitch as you see the Georgia players psyched about the RBI single, but now after the hit by pitch, Malden goes to second and that's a potential time run. And the potential go ahead run goes to first and Gilreath. So Atencio is rattled here in the sixth inning. The best thing for Cisneros to do is go out and talk to his pitcher, get him calmed down. Let him know not to worry, you know you're still up by a run. 
Don't panic. Just throw strikes. Get back into your routine. Get us another ground ball. But now you're coming to the heart of the Georgia lineup, the power. And, you know, it's interesting. Before, when Atencio was going really well, the Panama team had action in the bullpen. Now nobody in the bullpen. They're just going with Atencio. I think at this point in time, you're going to go with your best pitcher. If he's got enough in him, you're going to win and lose with your best. And I think they're going to win and lose with him today. Naps at the plate. Breaking ball. Grounded to shortstop. Could be two. There's one. Double play. Barroso to Morales to Flores. 6-4-3 double play off the bat of Naps. And Atencio gets out of it with the lead. Nicely done. One run. Georgia trying to come back down by one. Last chance coming up here for Georgia, trailing Panama two to one and only two hits for the Georgia club. Off Atencio, who has gone all the way, mostly ground ball outs, and finally gave up a run in the sixth inning. That occurred because of an error by his shortstop, and now he will face Michael Castleberry leading off. Six, seven, and eight in the order. So Georgia has to come up with a run here to stay alive. And now Danny Gilreath, the manager of Georgia, is talking about who is going to lead off this inning. Well, I guess announced was Barrett Knapps, but Knapps had hit into a double play, so it is Michael Castleberry leading it off. Lead off batter. Got to make sure you get that right, because if you hit out of order, it don't matter. Right. You know, that happened recently in a major league game, batting out of order. Actually, it was a Tigers game. That's not good. <laughs> They're not playing very well anyway. Looper, right center field, could drop, base hit. Sanchez couldn't get there, he plays it in. Castleberry, a leadoff single. The tying run is on at first base with nobody out here in the seventh, and you have to believe that Jacob Roberts will be bunting. Great tradition here in Taylor, Michigan, as we talked about. And a great game last year with Hawaii winning it. Tying the game in the last inning. Can Georgia do the same? Line drive left field. Navarro coming in. Can't get their base hit. Castleberry to second. The tying run in scoring position in Castleberry. And Roberts on with a base hit. Wasn't bunting. Now do you bunt with Benji Farr coming up, the number eight hitter. You have to believe that he'll be bunting here. Just that quick. Georgia's right back in the game. We're entering the ball game for Georgia. Benji Farr. And if I'm managing right here, he is bunny. Absolutely. There is the on-deck batter. That's Jamie Farr. The pressure could be on him if Benji Farr can move the runners up on a bunt. Tough part is Jamie's not very fast. And Benji is, so you could bunt here, you could hit and run, but in most cases, you have to bunt. He's bunting. First base side, Atencio Fields. Throws it over the first, gets the out, but the sacrifice is successful going 1-3. Textbook baseball here, getting the ball down on the right side, make the pitcher or the first baseman field the ball, push, pushes this ball over to the right side. Almost tilted his bat a little bit too much, but he got a chance to deaden it enough to get the ball down. Anytime your bat drops below your hands, you have a tendency to pop the ball up. But luckily enough for him, he deadened it enough to where it fell in for him. Now it gets interesting, and manager Raul Atencio comes out to the mound, and you can see Danny Gilreath, the manager of Georgia, talking to his hitter. And what do you do here? You have a number nine hitter who is one for 12 in the Junior League World Series. Do you have confidence in maybe making him lay down a bunch, squeezing in the tying run, or do you make him swing away? Squeezing's an option. You know, they got first base open. They may, in, in a lot of instances, try and pitch around him to load the bases. Now you have a force and a chance to get a, out of an inning like they did last inning, turning a double play. So this is chess match time. You got one coach thinking one thing, you got another coach 
thinking something else. And a base hit, tie the game, and maybe put Georgia in front. First pitch to Farr, swinging away, called strike, 0 and 1. But as a hitter, when you get runners in scoring position, if you get a fastball to hit, you have to put a good swing on it. And he had a good fastball to hit right there for first pitch. So he's not going to bunt, right? He's not going to suicide squeeze, right? I wouldn't think so. <laughs> Oh, one far. Now he is bunting. Bunts it. Between the mound and home plate. Feed to the plate. Save! Georgia ties the game as Castleberry scores on the squeeze by four. Well, he didn't do it on the first pitch, but on the second pitch, he was bunting. This is, this is an excellent play. Great call. Turns a little too soon, but he gets the ball down. This is a nice play by the pitcher, great play by the catcher. Tries to block him off the plate, but look at this slide. Got his hand in. Nice slide. Never mind the play on the other end. Great slide. But you see the dejection on Atencio's face. That's a pitcher that's a competitor and trying to do everything he can to win this ball game. Well, now he has to compose himself because the potential go-ahead run is at third base, another runner at first, one out, and Scott Morris, the leadoff hitter at the plate, fouls one out of play on the right side, 0-1. A 2-2 tie in the top of the seventh inning. So Georgia, in the last at-bat, able to come back and tie it. Well, we mentioned they have trailed in four of the five games in this tournament coming in. No problem for them. Pitch out. Runner coming on a squeeze. Tag me. As Roberts was coming, but Panama knew that the squeeze was on. At least they guessed that it would be on. And the pitch out worked out perfectly. This is a great play by Panama. I don't know if they guessed right or they picked up a sign, but they get him in the rundown. Catcher doesn't have to make a throw, makes a tag, turns, looks at the other runner. It's a nice play by the catcher. Great call by their manager. Getting out, making the tag there, and checking the runners, knowing that there's other runners on base. One and one to Morris. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. One and two to Morris. You know, I'm not sure if the catcher, Cisneros, had the ball in his mitt when he made that tag or not. We've seen that before. We saw that in the semis where Catcher made a tag without the ball in his mitt. But the out was still called. Morris, it's a shot up the middle, base hit in the center field. Four gets the second base, Far is there with a potential go ahead run, and Morris on on the base hit. And here's what we were talking about with the tag. He's running, he's got it in his glove. He tags him in the back with his glove. All right, he had it. Good play, good play by the catcher. Second baseman number five, Kevin Merida. But he has the fourth width to turn and look and check the runners. You know, there's always something else going on when you got runners on base. Meredith takes cold strike 0 and 1. Kevin Meredith, he wants your job done. He wants to be a sports commentator. Meredith swings and misses, and he had his head pulled out. He was trying to drive that ball out of here. He can have my job later, he, after, after he, he plays a couple years in the big leagues. That'll put him 10 years out, so that, that'll be long enough. O2 to Meredith, outside one and two. Tensio struggling a little bit with his control. He's starting to leave pitches up out over the plate, which is giving Georgia a chance and has given Georgia a chance to get back in this game. Fly ball, shallow left center, could be trouble. Oh, what a catch by Barroso. Wow. Spectacular play by the shortstop, Barroso, running out and ever so coolly, the over-the-shoulder grab. Back to the infield, look at that. Georgia's come back and tied this game at two. 
And they did it with a suicide squeeze bunt close play at the plate. Great slide by Castleberry to score the tying run. And then with Georgia trying to take the lead, what a play by the shortstop Barroso. That is a real good play. Of course, he leads off. Swing and a miss by Barroso. Oh, and one, he's three for three. A couple of singles, an RBI double. And Panama led this game 2 nothing, but Georgia a run in the sixth and a run in the seventh to tie it. See, his career goal is that he wants to be a doctor. He's going to be a big league shortstop playing like this. My goodness. Well, his favorite player is Nomar Garcia Parra, and he looked like Nomar on that play. He's a quiet leader on this team. Drives one in the left center field. That's a base hit. Cut off in the gap by far. Throws it in. And Barroso has to hold it first base with a leadoff single. Four for four. He's got a short, quick swing. Compact. Stays down through that ball. Nice. He almost hit one out before. and It was a ground rule double. I think it would have been a home run except the wind blew it in. And the best part of his game is that he never gets out of his game. He doesn't feel like he's a home run hitter. It's like he plays for the moment. If they need a double, they need a single, they need an RBI, he comes through for them. The other thing is he didn't let a couple of errors affect him. Scored a bunt, pulled back, and taken inside De Leon ahead 1-0. And this is a perfect situation after doing all that to steal a base, get yourself in scoring position to, to put your team ahead and give yourself a chance to win the ball game. Let's see, does De Leon let him try to steal, or does he bunt the first strike that he sees, throw the first one, Barroso back safe. Well, he was leaning. I think even if he's still second, he's still going to bunt him the third. So either way, he's going to bunt him. There he goes. Pitch inside, no throw to second. Barroso is second stolen base of the game, and the winning run is in scoring position with nobody out, and as you said, they could bunt him over to third now. Another nice jump by Barroso. Plays the game just like Omar. Great jump, needs a stolen base, gets a stolen base without a throw, even though they know that he's stealing. Count is 2 0 to De Leon. He's bunting. Foul ball. 2 and 1 to De Leon. Got to get the ball down in a situation like that. Don't get over anxious. Keep your bat head above your hands so that you can get the ball to go down. If your bat head drops below your hands, it's going to be a struggle to keep the ball on the ground, and generally you pop that ball up. Bill Reith has gone all the way in this game. Looks at second. Deals the 2 1, bunted. In between the man and home plate, Gilreath throws the first. He got him, but on the play, Barroso goes to third with a winning run 90 feet away. He gets this ball down, taps it back to the pitcher. Wrong direction, but great at deadening the ball. Ball dribbles out to the pitcher, pitcher sets his feet, throws a strike to first base. Now you got the winning run at third with the heart of your lineup coming up. Victor Miranda at the plate, takes outside, 1-0. The infield is in. The prayers for Panama, just hoping that Miranda can come through. And the outfield's moved in some, so that, they can, outside. so that they can take away the blue pit, because a fly ball or a fly ball deep is gonna score them anyway. In a situation right? like this, you may wanna walk the bases loaded, just so that you give yourself a chance to get a force at any base. Line drive left field, diving effort by far. Did he get it? Yes, he did. He caught it. And Barroso has to stand third. What a catch by Benji Farr. Two down. This is a game-saving catch by the left fielder. Leaves his feet. When you're talking time, game on the line, look at the determination. Great catch on his part. And bad brace running on Barroso's part. He ran a long ways to catch his ball. But in a situation like that, Barroso, if he goes back and tags, he's got a chance to score on that. And that's why you have six umpires. Philip Geisler with a good call out there and left. Called strike to Angel Cisneros, the cleanup hitter, 0-1. Can Gilreath and Georgia send this game into extra innings? They need another out here, the last out of the inning. 
0-1 to Cisneros, breaking ball, grounded third base. Malden has it, throws to first, he got him! Gilreath gets out of it with a man at third and one out. He gets this game into extra innings. No runs, one hit, no errors, a man left at third, and Benji Farr saves the day for Georgia. Look at that catch. Two two as we go to extra innings. Panama and Georgia headed to the eighth inning. Well, in the third inning, Panama with a big RBI double by Miranda, scoring Barroso. It was one to nothing. Then in the sixth, Georgia coming back. Molden an RBI single, scoring Morris. And in the seventh inning. To tie the game, squeeze bunt by Jamie Farr. Great slide by Castleberry. Ties the game, and then what a catch by Farr to keep a runner at third base in the last half inning. Keep the game tied. He saved the day for Georgia. Game save and catch. Wow. Hey, that's why he's out there. That's why he was moved out to left field instead of center field with a foot injury, mind you. He made that catch. That's why he's moved from center to left. Perfect timing. <laughs> In the right place at the right time. His manager, Danny Gilry, is a genius. <laughs> He'll look like one in the end. <laughs> that's right. That. And Enar Atencio has gone all the way. He has thrown 78 pitches as Seth Malden leads it off for Georgia. Line drive, base hit left center field. In the gap, Navarro over to cut it off. Throws into second, here comes Malden. He's a dead duck. Barroso throws the first, crash, he's out. As Flores hangs onto the baseball. Well, you think you're gonna get a double in the gap, but what a play by Navarro cutting it off. And then the throw into second base is through showing off a gun for an arm. This is a great play by the left fielder. This ball's drilled the left center field. But the hesitation in the run, and he gets about here, and he kind of slows down. Now he picks it up again, and by then, the ball's already at second base. Gets him in a rundown. Textbook rundown. Throw over the top. Look at this throw. Right on the money. Ground ball foul on the third base side. That's two awesome plays by the left fielder to keep this game going. My. Tyler Gilreath to the plate. A rocket to first off the glove of Flores recovers and tags first base two down. Hot shot, knocked down by the first base by the Patriots two away. Now Barrett Knapps, always a threat to go deep. One for three, a single. So it's starting to get late in the game. They're starting to hit him a little harder. It could be that he's getting tired or he's leaving his pitches out over the plate. But in a game like this, a pitcher can only throw 10 innings. And then they'll have to mandatorily make a change. And we're in the eighth, and he's throwing. This pitch count's starting to get up there a little bit. Naps grounds one, third base side. Short on, nice stop by De Leon. Spins, throws the first, he got him. De Leon has been spectacular at third base all game long. No runs, one hit, no errors, nobody left. We go to the bottom of the eighth in extra innings. It's Panama 2, Georgia 2. Outstanding defense by Panama. Panama 2, Georgia 2 as we go to the bottom of the eighth. And Tyler Gilreath leaves the game after seven innings and a new pitcher coming in. And it is the man who made the outstanding catch and left. Now he's pitching. Left-hander Benji Farr. So he saved the day for the starter, and now he gets to go out there and work against Panama. There you see his numbers. Giving him just one game. He's giving him a little bit different look from the left-hand side. Doesn't throw very hard. Best pitch is his curveball, but you give, you've seen a hard thrower all game and, and lefty and change of pace kind of throws you off a little bit as a hitter. Sanchez at the plate, takes a call and strike, one and one. He is known, far as, for a 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock curveball. Reach your back on top, let's go. Now he might not be a hard thrower, but his favorite pitcher is Randy Johnson. On top, baby, let's go. Right. go 
Two and one now to Sanchez. I'm sure Randy, after that catch he made in left field, would love him playing left field <laughs> for him, too. In the clutch. This game would have been over. Sanchez, the number five hitter. We mentioned earlier that his father is a policeman. Swing and a miss by Sanchez, two and two. On top, on top, stay tall on the back side. Now the two, two to Sanchez, way outside, three and two. On top, don't come three quarters. Panama with 10 hits in this game. Teammates rooting him on. 3-2 to Sanchez, fouled back. Remains 3-2. Joe, as a hitter sees more pitches, it generally runs to his favor. More pitches you foul off, you get your timing. You know, you're seeing all his whole repertoire of pitches. You know, a little change up, a little fastball, a little breaking ball, which is his best pitch. But the more you see, the better your chances are you're going to get a hit. Sanchez has changed to a different bat. And he takes high ball four. So the winning run is on at first base with nobody out. We saw that in the seventh inning. And Barroso was left at third. Does Atencio try to bunt Sanchez over to second base? We'll see. I would think so, but in this situation, lefty at pitching makes it a little different, give you a little bit different look as to what kind of lead you can get, try and get a one-way lead, get him to throw over. That sort of thing, but it's just all in. Does he slide step? Does he lift his leg? All that kind of goes, comes into play. Throw to first and Sanchez back. And if you're going to bunt, do you bunt on the first base side because it's a lefty who follows through on the third base side? I think so. I think you bunt to first base because it's a lot harder to throw for that first baseman to turn and throw that ball to second than it is to bunt the ball to the third baseman when he's got free reign to fire that ball to second base. 1 0 to Atencio. Not only that, but it is a right handed throwing first baseman. So if he feels it, he has to turn to throw to second. Bunt first base side, just inside the line. Farr makes the tag. The sacrifice is successful, getting Sanchez over to second base. Real good play by far. If you don't have to make a throw, you just come in like he did, make a little tag, and get him out. Nice play by Farr. This ball's bunted right up the line. He breaks right away, no hesitation. Just tags him right there, turns, looks at the runner just to double check and make sure that he's not rounding. Keep him close. Good Here's job. Flores at the plate. Takes outside, 1-0. The winning run at second base here in the bottom of the eighth. 2-2 two -two ball game. Oh, top now, lefty on righty here. You got first base open. You have options as a pitcher. Breaking ball just missed outside. Do you give him something good to hit? Do you put him on? You know, make him hit your pitch? You got a lot of options. Generally, you don't give him anything good to hit and let him get himself out. And if he doesn't, you have a runner at first and second, which sets up the double play. Called strike, two and one. A left-handed batter on deck in Navarro. So if you do walk Flores, not the worst thing in the world. Like you said, the double play, and also you'd be lefty against lefty. Right. Two, one to Flores. Ground ball, third base, passed. A diving Malden, base hit in the left field, holding up at third base, Sanchez with a winning run. It's first and third, one out. Again, Georgia will have to come up with either a big play here or a strikeout to get out of this. This is an all-out dive by the third baseman. Great effort here. Just misses this ball. The ball's driven in the left field. Now Eliezer Navarro, who made that throw from left field. And nailed Malden, who was trying to turn a single into a double. Fly ball left field. Runner tagging at third. Catch made by Meredith. Here comes Sanchez for the win. The slide. He's out. Oh, what a play by Meredith to gun down Sanchez again. Georgia survives. A double play to end the inning. Unbelievable. Wow, another outstanding play by the left fielder. Throws a strike to home plate. Great play. 
incredible left field play by Georgia. At the end of eight, we're tied at two. Georgia two, Panama two, as we go to the top of the ninth yeah. inning. And it doesn't matter who you put in left field for Georgia. They will make a great play to save the day. Called strike to Manuel, or rather to uh, Michael Castleberry leading off against the Tensio, who's still in there. Line drive, base hit left center field. Miranda throws it in, a leadoff single for Michael Castleberry, his second hit of the game. Here comes Georgia right back at him. Georgia only had one hit in the first five innings. But since then, they've had six, so they have seven in the game now against Atencio. Leadoff man aboard in a 2-2 game in extra innings. And the top of the ninth. And Atencio's pitched all nine innings. He can only Swing throw ten. Right. Roberts one for three at the plate. Here we go, babe. 0-1 to Roberts, checks a swing, and he's hit by the pitch. Roberts hit by the pitch. So first and second, nobody out. This ball is a split finger, a fork ball running hard in, hits him right on his right elbow. Hurts for a second, but gives us his team a chance with runners on first and second and nobody out. So now Benji Farr, who came in as the pitcher, and he made that great catch in left field earlier. We'll see if he's bunting. First and second and nobody out. He does bunt and fouls it back 0-1. Well, the logical move to try to get two men in the scoring position in a tie game in the ninth. Well, he's running, the runners are running a little too soon on that, anticipating him getting the ball down instead of letting him get the ball down. In Benji's case, he has to bunt the ball. You're giving yourself up. It's not a drag bunt. All you're trying to do is get the ball on the ground and move the runners up. Oh, one to far pitch out. And nothing happening as far as runners going. In case you're wondering, the longest game in Junior League World Series history, 14 innings. Not sure when that was, but it was California against Hawaii. It actually, it wasn't the championship, but it was in the tournament. Oh, one to far. Outside corner called strike. 0 oh and 2. Well, now you have to figure the bunt is off, although we did see a bunt with two strikes earlier in this game. 0-2 oh, to far, fouls it back, it remains 0-2. Oh, we talked about how it's hot, but Atencio has gone all the way. It might be tiring here in the ninth inning. 0-2 oh, to far, and a breaking ball outside and low, 1-2. and two. He's pitched the nine innings, but he's also Thrown a lot of pitches. He's ran the bases. I mean, he's had a lot going on. He's got 94 pitches, so it makes it tough to throw 10 innings that way. Ground ball back to the box could be two. Atencio throws the third for one. De Leon the first. Easy double play. Going 1 5 3. Well, that's definitely a new way to turn a double play. I'll tell you what, that helps out a lot, too, because you get the lead runner and you get two outs. Man. Batter, number 12. This ball's hit. Far. Not too hard, not bad of a swing, just right to the pitcher. Doesn't run the ball out. He assumed that, that it must have been two outs because if he's right, he's nowhere near running at first base. Right. That's a ball you have to run all the way through. Let the umpires make the call, not you. You have to run all the way through first base. Jamie Farr takes a called strike 0-1. Pitch to far, breaking ball in the inside corner. Call strike 0 2. So after having first and second, nobody out, Atencio is one strike away from getting out of this unscathed. In a situation like that, Joe, he actually, they actually could have turned a triple play in that situation. If he throws right. the ball to second base. Right, you have the runner not even running towards first base. 0 2 to far, foul back. 
remains 0-2. These two teams are both Houdini-type teams, though, aren't they? I mean, they're getting out of situations. Oh, man. Left and right. But the only thing in, in, in baseball in general, there you cannot control on, base, you base running. You can control the mistakes you make, but you cannot control fielding. But you have, you can control running the ball out. And that's a situation where you just have to run the ball out. The 0-2 to Jamie Farr, fouled back. Remains 0-2. Runner at second base, Roberts with two down. A base hit here, and Georgia could take the lead in the top of the ninth. Tencio with only one strikeout in the game. That was back in the first inning. He's had a couple of double plays behind him. 0-2 to far. Poked in the air in a shallow right center. Base hit. Roberts around third, headed to the plate. The throw by Miranda. Offline. Roberts scores. Georgia takes the lead on an RBI single by Jamie Farr, the number nine hitter. And behind in the count, 0-2, he delivers. This is a ball that's out on the outer corner. Doesn't take a real good swing at it. Probably if he'd have taken a good swing at it, the ball wouldn't have fell in. The center fielder would have caught it, but center fielder gets the ball, throws the ball home, scores the run. Georgia ahead. Morris pops it up, left side of the infield. De Leon comes in, and the third baseman has it. But the damage has been done. Georgia taking the lead for the first time in this game as they score a run on a couple of base hits. And Jamie Farr, the number nine hitter, comes through. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Georgia on top. Well, it's been a great day in Taylor, Michigan. A lot of emotion for both teams. Close plays at the plate. A lot of excitement, energy. And Georgia down early, coming back to tie it, and then going ahead on this base hit by the number nine hitter, Jamie Farr. And Georgia with a one-run lead as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. It has been hotly contested. Joe Castellano and Darnell Coles with you. And what an eventful game it has been for this man, Benji Farr, who made a diving catch in left, and now trying to get the victory as the pitcher as Cartersville, Georgia, a team from 50 miles north of Atlanta, tries to beat Panama in the Junior League World Series Championship. And well, Morales leading off, takes a call, strike 0-1. He'll be Reach followed by the top no of the order, Jesus Sparoso. No Georgia hasn't been able to figure out how to get out. And then Diego De Leon. Pitch outside, one and one. Is it Panama's turn to come back? Throw it straight, baby. Throw it straight. By the likes of this game, yeah, it is. <laughs> Both teams are playing their hearts out. Pitch inside, two and one. Panama scored a run in the third, a run in the fifth. They led two nothing. Now you can see that it's sort of headache time because Georgia coming back with a run in the sixth, a run in the seventh, and then going ahead in the ninth. Top of this ninth, Papa, third base side, Malden under it, right near the bag, and he has it. Morales is out number one. And there you see, DeRosa was coming up right now four for four, leading Panama. And they had the lead, but Georgia taking the lead in the ninth inning and trying to hold on now. Zeus Barroso at the plate, four for four with the RBI double in the fifth. He's also had a couple of stolen bases. He made a nice catch running out of shortstop into the outfield. Facing far and the pitch is way outside. One, no, you don't want to walk Barroso with his speed. It's like getting a double because he's going. There's Diego De Leon. He's had a big game defensively. Now he's thinking about his offense. 1-0 to Barroso. 
Hit in the air, right field, hit well, back goes Roberts at the track, it's over his head! It bounces and goes over the wall for a ground rule double. Jesus Barroso is five for five, and Panama has the tying run in scoring position with one away. Panama will not quit. This ball's thrown on the out, outside half of the plate. This ball's driven way over the right fielder's head, kind of turns him a little bit. Ground rule double. Nice swing. And here comes the manager, Danny Gurry, out to talk to his pitcher far. And Diego De Leon coming up. Number two hitter in the lineup. And he has done well in this Junior League World Series with five hits and 12 at bats in the tournament. And you know that if he comes up with a base hit to the outfield, Bar uh, Barroso has a good chance to score with his speed. Jesus being the catalyst of their ball, ball team, he has not disappointed one iota. He has stepped, stepped up big for his team today. Bluff to second by far. And this is a non-bunt situation. You do not want to give away an out with two outs in the ninth inning. 1-0 to De Leon. He's the winning run at the plate. Three to two, Georgia. Bottom of the ninth. A couple of extra innings. The pitch to De Leon inside, two and zero. Oh. Taking off for third, Barroso falls down. The tag is out. Oh, he would have been there, but he fell down and he just could never get back up. I mean, it was a good move because the catcher far. Kind of fell asleep there, but Barroso fell down. This is a great move. He, he keeps moving, keeps moving. Now he goes when he knows he's going to throw the ball back to the pitcher, slips and falls. My. Oh. I mean, it's not a bad decision, right? That's a great decision on his part. I mean, you can't help slipping. Oh, that's so frustrating for Barroso. Now two down. Well, that's a change in motion just as quickly as you get something started. Here's the pitch called strike two and one to De Leon. And you're smiling. The next thing you know, you're crying because of, you know, a miscue or a misplay in the field. I mean, that's something that you can't help there. 2-1 to De Leon. Ground ball hit hard to short. Could be the game. Fielded by Morris. Throws the first. He got him. Georgia wins it. Three to two. Georgia wins the Junior League World Series as they come back and win it in dramatic fashion. And they are excited in jubilation on the field here in Taylor, Michigan. Defense by Georgia to hang on. When Panama had opportunities galore to win this game. In the seventh inning, in the eighth inning, and even here in the ninth inning, they had a runner at second and one out, but Georgia holds on to win it. Darnell, this has just been an incredible game today. Georgia has to feel great about how they have nerves on steel to be able to come back in the U.S. Championship and then again today. This has been a great job on both teams. You feel sorry for the Panamanian team, but they played their hearts out, and today the best team won. Georgia was the best team. A couple of extra innings. Final score, Georgia 3, Panama 2. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Again, the final. Georgia three, Panama two, Georgia the Junior League World Series champions.